afternoon, Ms. Shaylin Scott. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Yes, yes, I am doing well and I'm so happy that you're here for Confidence Conversations. Well, thank you again. I appreciate it. Look forward to it. Yes, so we're going to kick things off understanding what does confidence mean to you? Oh, I love that question. This, uh, I'm always trying to reinforce confidence. I have two young girls, so I'm always trying to reinforce that to them as well. Um, to me, confidence is finding your voice and continuing to listen to it as it changes as you grow. Because, you know, that's what, especially as a, a young Black woman, that's what keeps us going in whatever journey, path, career, or life that we take. And confidence is what boosts us. It is. And as the executive director over at Founders First, I know that you have to have quite a deal of confidence, especially running a business during such times as these COVID-19 hit small businesses very hard. So I want to hear what tips or pieces of advice you have for small businesses to really be able to pivot or sustain themselves when times get tough. Oh, that is a great question as well. Um, I will say the pandemic taught business owners, uh, <laughs> employees, family members, a lot about themselves and what actually uh, they need in order to make it through life, period. Um, and for small business owners, they had to make a lot of just doors closing, uh, especially restaurant owners or those that have direct client services face-to-face, -face, changing to a virtual model or a hybrid model for some was scary, intimidating, but giving yourself enough patience and grace to embrace change and to be okay with it looking a little odd in the beginning. It, you know, when you, your baby is little, it's, it's a little wobbly, doesn't quite move as well, but it, they'll eventually grow to stabilize and be strong enough to sustain themselves. And that's what you want for your businesses. You want them to grow and excel and succeed. And so I, I definitely say that patience and flexibility with um, also asking for help and looking at your own community as models of growth and what's working. You don't have to figure out how to do things by yourself. That's what the community is for. So lean on each other too. You know, that's so important. I think a lot of times you, you hit on a couple of things there. One, asking for help, but two, being able to pivot during hard times. A lot of times as business owners, we like to take what's called calculated risk. And we definitely don't calculate or anticipate a pandemic. But during those times, that really is make or break seasons, arrival of the fittest. And what we have to do is be able to evolve. And so understanding that it's okay that the journey, the path to get to where you want to be, maybe looks different than the road you mm -hmm. thought to take, as long as that end goal looks the same. Yeah. You, you think about where, I, I don't know about every adult, but a lot of adults are not where they thought they would be out of high school. And so just think about the same with your business. You have a vision and a plan and a goal. You can plan all day long for it, but you have to be able to adjust to what's happening in that current time frame that you're in. So I know that you know a lot about that. So what does that mean? How do we adjust and what tips do you have for making a successful pivot? I definitely say for small business owners, education, um, getting as much education as possible on what it truly means for your industry, what it means for the type of business that you have, um, whether that's technology needs that you may um, need for your business to grow and sustain or to change, especially because of COVID, taking an interest in not just working in your business, but working on your business too, because you can get lost in the weeds really quickly, just trying to make sure that you are above water. But if you have a moment to step back and get some education. So there are accelerator programs that exist in every community, especially in the Texas region. There are a plethora of resources out there for ideation stage, startup businesses. Um, and where Founders First fits in, we're for those businesses that are uh, service-based that have been in existence for a while. They may have been working really hard, but they can't quite figure out how to grow to the next level, to add employees or to add another location or to grow in size. 
what does that mean? And so we focus on that area. So education is the core of what we try um, to reach. And I know a number of other supporting organizations agree as well. Yeah, and it's amazing the work that you guys are doing out in Texas. And it kind of ties back to what you initially stated, which is having that sense of community. But I'm thinking about small business owners now, and I can only imagine that some would be rather intimidated to approach an organization like yours thinking that, oh, maybe I'm too small or I'm not sure if I'm ready. So what advice do you have in terms of being able to navigate those situations? And when is it time to reach out or join a community? I think it's always time, but how do you know? (laughs) I was going to agree. I say it's always time. The only time you get a no right off the bat is when you don't ask the question. So... (laughs) I mm-hmm. definitely say, no matter what size you are, if you apply for, let's say, a grant or an accelerator program, they let you know pretty quickly the reasons why you may not qualify, what steps you need to take in order to move um, so you can be eligible for the program. So, for example, our accelerator programs start with small businesses that have a revenue of at least 50K to 250K. We have another program that goes from 250K to a million and another from a million to five. And so you may think I'm not quite at 50K in revenue yet, but you may be your business. You may have the business plan ready. You may have your marketing. You may have your operations ready to go and you are working, but you're not quite there yet. So start with uh, other accelerated programs that focus on that area. Then when you are ready, we're still here. We're not going anywhere. So Take it as a, a level, leveling up each time when it comes to educating yourself about your business. So it's never a wrong time to ask. Yeah. And I'd love for you to break down accelerator programs and what they can provide and how they actually help businesses. Oh, yes. Uh, a good thing. Um, I, I will say this for people who are education averse, <laughs> it is the accelerator programs are usually provided in cohort styles. So it's peer education along with subject matter experts and those who have been in the community and who have the knowledge about actually working in a business, not just academia. So you're not there simply to listen to someone talk to you for hours about how to start a business, how to write a plan, but each accelerator program focuses on different things. So your startups may focus on just that, the startup things writing the business plan, who is your target audience, um, how do you need to make sure that you are pricing things at the right amount, those types of things, and your revenue model. The uh, area as far as Founders First focuses on is growth and scaling. And so we take a look at uh, hiring people. What does it mean when you need to actually hire an employee, not a, a contractor? What does it mean when you're bringing someone in? That's a whole different conversation how to make sure you're hiring the right people to support your business. Um, What does it look like to plan your growth for 10 years out? Are you able to have a growth plan? Do you have a succession plan if something goes wrong? Do you have um, a lot of mitigating factors surrounding you? Let's say, especially the pandemic, (laughs) something happens there. Do you have a way to pivot? Are you tech enabled? If you haven't been, what does that mean? And so really having them look specifically at their business and see what changes they need to make in order to be sustainable and to almost project their income, uh, their revenue to make sure that they can maintain it and add these, this creation of wealth in the communities that they're in. It's amazing. And I think that the services that you guys provide and the way that you help entrepreneurs is so important because a lot of times when you're starting a new business, you don't know what you don't know. Oh yeah. (laughs) Have a resource like Founders First. I mean, why wouldn't you take advantage of it? So I know you guys have a grant um, for people who are in the Texas area. Can you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. This is... um... This is an exciting time for Founders First because this is our fourth grant that we have done across the nation. So we are uh, based in San Diego. So we serve the state of California, Illinois, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Texas, and we'll be expanding a little bit more in the next few years. 
So we've done a grant program in Chicago. We've done one in the SoCal region. Uh, and we're wrapping up one in the Philadelphia, New Jersey area now. And we also have the Texas one. So the Texas Job Creators Quest Grant is $100,000 for 30 businesses in North, South, and Central Texas. And so what that means is the uh, business owners that apply, they have the opportunity to receive funds of either, 10, let's say the most is $10,000 and the smallest amount is 1,000, but it's paired with access to a seat in our accelerator program. So we wanted to make sure that we're not just simply giving you um, funds to support your business, which is great, but you also need to know what to do with the funds when you get it to make sure your business can grow and we didn't want to just uh, leave education out of it because that is such a vital part about uh, having these diverse founders grow their businesses, what that means to have access to capital. So a few things that we um, look for is we have a deadline coming up. So it's been extended to September 22nd. So there's still time to apply for sure for the grant and minimum requirements is $100,000 in revenue for your business. And uh, you need to have at least two to 20 employees. Uh, you must have the ability to add one to net, one to net two net new employees in the next 12 months or so. Um, you also have to uh, agree to participate in our accelerator program because we don't want to just simply give the funds. We want to make sure that it's, it's mutually beneficial and that, uh, you know, everyone is, you're not just getting something. So you're able to use the funds for, uh, any support for your business that you may need, whether it's technology, marketing, um, assisting when it comes to assisting the, the overall cost when it comes to adding someone to your team, a variety of different options for you. And so there's a few things that we look for in the application process. We'll ask you to provide financials on your business to verify you meet the minimum requirements. We'll ask you for an org chart or something that shows what your current staffing levels are, what your projected future goals are. Uh, do you have plans to add premium wage employment at 50K or above in the next year? Um, if so, what does that look like? How have you been able to uh, adjust due to COVID? What types of things have you done to persevere and become resilient during this time? And we'll also ask you to do a video about your business. What makes you unique? Tell us something that in writing, we just don't get. So right. whether it's the backstory about how you started, the engagement to the community that you may have, or whether it's why you really need the funds to support your business, whatever that is, that 90 second video, I mean, that's my favorite part of going through the applications is the 90 second videos, because you learn so much about the variety of businesses that exist out there. Yeah. And that's how you apply. A picture uh, tells a thousand words, so a yes. video is way more than that. Um, yes. I know a lot of grant applications cross your table, and a lot of listeners right now are probably wondering, how do they get funding for their business, whether it's through Founders First, if they meet your grant requirements, or otherwise. So I want to know what tips you have in preparing a successful grant application. How do people put their best foot forward? I love that question because one thing, I have a background in nonprofit and government. So I'm very familiar with either writing grants for people to receive them or providing grants out to people having subgrantees. And one thing that is common across the board is you need to have your stuff in order. Um, we're going to pretty much ask you for the same things over and over again. So in small business grants, whether that's startup, whether that's growth stage, um, whether that's for innovation or whatever the cause is that the organization is seeking is they're gonna to wanna to see your financials. So whether that's your profit loss statement or your tax returns or your audited financials for your business. If you don't have those right off the bat, that may be a trigger for you to say, okay, I need to get some education on how to make sure my financials are in order. Um, I always emphasize that for sure because your financials really tell a numerical story about your business, how it's doing, areas that it needs to improve, um, the growth of your business. You can see a lot with just the numbers. Right. 
So outside of that, I definitely say your financials. Uh, second is having a clear way to tell your business story. So even if you don't have a, a, a flat mission or a vision about your business, if someone came up to you today and said, tell me about your business, would you have a, a lot of ums? Uh, I do a little bit of this. Be able to clearly articulate what your business does, the problem is trying to solve, uh, the target areas that you're trying to reach, and what your goals are. Mm -hmm. And also have a vision for your business. Where do you want it to get? If someone came to you today with a million dollars, say, I want to invest in your business, I want to give you this grant, do you know what to do with it? Have mm -hmm. you even thought about that? So I'd say those three things are the biggest um, because everything else are, it's all the sausage making in between. You have <laughs> all of your, uh, your questions on your, your marketing, all of those things can be answered with education for sure. That's amazing. And, you know, one of the things that you mentioned actually telling your brand story, I think is where a lot of people kind of waver and wonder, am I the best person to tell my story? And how do I do that? And I get really nervous when I have to talk to people. And there's that kind of issue of confidence there. How do I do that in a way that comes off genuine when I'm afraid to speak to people? So how do we get out of our own way? Oh, I will say that oftentimes people don't simply purchase a service or buy a product because I like this product, I like this service. They usually like the person behind it. They like the story behind it. Um, and especially now, um, post-pandemic post employees are working for businesses that they like, they enjoy their mission, they believe um, what they stand for and what they're doing. And so if you are authentic and true to what your mission and vision and the problem that you're trying to solve, and you can speak to that, it doesn't matter if you are a public speaker or if you are the best person to do it, your story says enough. Yeah. What you're doing in the community, what you're doing in your business says enough, especially if it's authentic and it's true to heart of what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. It's so true. And just being able to present ourselves in the best light. And I think one of the most important things is that authenticity behind it. And the fact that you start this business means that you are passionate about it. Yeah. Just being able to convey that because you're so right. We don't just buy things to buy them. We buy them because we support them. We believe yeah. them and they inspire us and they're going to add value to our lives in one way or another. There's an emotion behind every transaction that you have. Uh, and I will add to uh, the accelerator programs that Founders First provides at the end of each one of the cohorts, we have a pitch competition. So the business owners are coached and mentored on how to tell their story, how to frame it. So if an investor or if you have a, a meeting with a, a, a traditional lender or someone that wants to infuse money into your business, you should be able to, to speak to it clearly. And so we help them with that. And then they get the opportunity to get additional funding from the pitch competition too, which is always good. And I really love that one of the things that your business does is actually shine a light on women and minority owned businesses as well. So I want to know what it means during this day and age to run a successful woman-owned, minority-owned and operated business? Oh, there are uh, a lot of programs and services that, that assist women and women of color, um, which are beautiful. Take advantage of them all. <laughs> I, I definitely say take advantage of them all for sure. Um, and, and something else that that Founders First definitely takes through the heart is the celebration of inclusivity is because it takes a village truly, not just to raise a family, but to grow your business. Um, so when you're in cohorts or accelerators that support diverse founders, or you're in programs and workshops that are supporting uh, women-led businesses or women of color businesses, network, start to establish relationships with other ones who are in the same uh, business 
realm that you're in because a lot of those contacts when it comes to a, a good accountant or a lawyer or getting the things that your business needs to succeed are probably right in your own backyard. But it's just connecting and infusing yourself in the business community that you are in. Um, I definitely say taking advantage of that. And as women of color, I know as a woman of color myself, I love to be in the mix of things. And COVID has definitely cut a lot of that out, but there are virtual opportunities that exist. So whether that's your local chamber or your SBA, or it's a, a local college that are providing workshops or meet and greets online for business owners, go to them. Some of them are early in the morning, but grab your coffee and go. It's, it's great networking and social relationship building. Yeah, just getting yourself out there. And once again, we're back to that idea of community. So I don't want to hold you, but I do want to pick your brain on three tips you okay. have for small businesses to succeed. Oh, three tips for them to succeed. Um, I'm always going to go with the number one education <laughs> for sure is definitely get education and don't feel as if uh, Let's say you've gone through one accelerator and there are two, three others. It's okay. All of them offer something different. You can attend multiple accelerators and they each bring something value. It takes multiple times for things to stick in your head anyway. So educate yourself as much as possible. Um, the second thing I would say is to engage in your community. Know what's happening. Um, when local... Um, economic development officials or let's say your local county or your state provides funding. If you are not aware of what's going on in your own community, you could miss out. So know what's happening in your area when it comes to small businesses, when it comes to your industry, even when it comes to what's happening in your neighborhood. If there are changes to zoning or regulations that can affect your business, if you've only been working in your business all day long and not paying attention to anything else, you could miss out. So knowing your engagement in your community uh, is the second one. Uh, the third one I would say is to think big. Even though your business is small, you should always think big because that's where you initially want to go. As a diverse founder, as a woman-led business, as a minority-owned business, no one dreams of their business to stay small. You always have these big visions. So keep thinking big, but work towards those goals. Don't just simply be content in what feels comfortable, but work towards those big audacious goals that you have because they are attainable. You know, I love all three of those points, but that third one really hits home. Dream big because you can do it. We can yeah. get there. We you can. can. And you, when you see it, you can be it. But sometimes we have to see it in our own minds first. Sometimes yes. it's just out in the universe. But just knowing that it's all possible is so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. 